So your dream trip around the world is finally a reality. Your backpack is packed, you're ready to go to the airport, but when you get there, tragedy strikes. Your backpack is too heavy, it exceeds the weight limits of the airline. How do you avoid this tragedy? Easy, you pick up one of these bad boys. There are many brands of digital luggage scales available on the market. They all cost around $10 to $15 US, something like that, with a few specialty ones going up to $20 or even $30. But for the most part, they're quite affordable and lightweight. And which one you choose just comes down to what's available in your local store and what features you're looking for. This particular luggage scale is from a company called Go Travel. And there at the top, you see the slogan for this device, weigh it, don't pay it. And that kind of sums up what these uh, units are for. You use them to weigh your suitcase or your backpack before you go to the airport to make sure that it doesn't exceed the airline limits. Because if your bag is too heavy, you have to pay very hefty fees, you know, excess luggage fees. So if you spend $10 on a luggage scale like this, it could save you a lot of money in the long run. Let's take a quick look at the packaging for this one. It's a very simple package, as you can see, it just comes in a plastic sort of a blister pack. It says on the front that it weighs up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds. Uh, a lot of these scales that I saw weigh up to 50 kilograms or 110 pounds but I didn't think I needed one that uh, went that high. Other things were more important to me, so I got this one instead. To be honest, if your backpack weighs 88 pounds, you're, you have a lot more trouble than excess luggage fees. You know, no backpack is ever going to weigh that much. So 88 pounds seems like a, a very useful limit. Going up to 110 pounds really isn't that important. On the back, you can see it says it's an accurate high precision sensor. This model is backlit and it can measure in grams, ounces, kilograms, and pounds. It's quite a small and light one, which is the main reason why I got this one. Plus, it just happened to be available in the stores I went to. There might be a better model available online, but I just wasn't able to buy one um, in the stores around me, so this is the one that I picked out. So let's open it up and see what comes inside the package. It's a very simple uh, opening. The top just uh, pops off and your luggage scale lifts out like that. Let's set it aside just for a second. Inside you really don't get anything at all. You get this uh, little brochure that describes it and that's, uh, that's all. There's uh, nothing else in the package. I find this is a common trend with a lot of companies these days that even in an electronic device like this they don't include an instruction manual. Even worse, there are no instructions at all printed even on the packaging. Nothing. So you either have to go online to their website and download the PDF uh, instruction manual or you just figure it out on your own and most of the features of this device you can figure out on your own after some trial and error but I think it would be a lot better if there was just a few simple instructions here to tell you how to set it up and uh, what to do but that's the way the modern world is but I would recommend going to the website and downloading the PDF instruction manual just give it a read through and you can find out all kinds of interesting things about this device the first thing you'll notice about this scale is probably that it is quite simple in its design and it has just one button for all of its features and we'll talk about that in a minute. The front you have the button, the LED screen which is backlit and on the back you just see the metal hook that hangs from the bottom for hanging your bags and there is a battery compartment right here on one side. It's important to note that it comes with a battery pre-installed. It is one of those 
uh, coin batteries, a CR2032 battery, but in order to get the uh, scale operational, you have to remove a plastic tab from inside the battery compartment so that it can make contact. And you can do that quite simply. There's an arrow here on the door. You simply press down with your thumb, push it to the side, and the door comes off and inside you see the coin battery. I've already taken it out, but there was a plastic cover here with a tab on it. And you pull on the tab, pull the plastic cover off the battery, and then it will be ready to go. On the uh, front, when you turn it on, you will see a battery indicator, and it will tell you when the battery is getting low and you need to replace it. Replacing the battery is quite simple. It's held in place with a little spring there on the bottom. You just need to get your fingernail underneath, pop it out like that, and there's your battery. It has a plus sign on the top, and the plus faces upwards. Again, the packaging does not tell you that, and there's nothing anywhere on here to indicate how you're supposed to put the battery in. So again, you either have to know this because that's how it was when it came out of the box, or you have to go to the online uh, PDF instruction manual to learn all this. So if you have a new battery, you simply slide it in there and then push it in against the spring until it clicks into place. There's two little teeth here at the very top and that holds it in. And it's very, um, very solid the way it sits in there. Then you put the cover back on and click it back into place and now you are good to go. I'll demonstrate this scale in actual use in a few minutes but just to give you a rough idea of how it works to turn it on you just push this button wait until you get a solid row of zeros then you hang your bag wait until it flashes three times and that is the wait and it will hold it for five seconds in memory before going back to zero and that gives you a chance to weigh your bag again holds for five or six seconds and then goes back to zero and you can do that as many times as you like they recommend weighing your bag at least two times maybe three times just to make sure that you did not get an inaccurate result the first time these scales are quite precise, but they are sensitive to movement. So if your backpack happens to be swinging from side to side, you might get an inaccurate result. If you're holding it on an angle, you might get an inaccurate result. To get the best results, you have to hold it as horizontal as you can, and then hold your bag as steady as you can, and then you get the most accurate results possible. To turn the unit off is just as simple. You have to press and hold the button for two seconds and then it turns off. So just to repeat, to turn it on, just press the button once, wait until you get the zeros, and then you're good to go to weigh your bag. It has a 90 second auto off feature, so you don't have to worry about turning it off yourself. It will turn off after 90 seconds if you don't uh, touch the screen. But to turn it off earlier than that, just hold down the button. Now it's off. As I mentioned earlier, this unit can measure in grams, ounces, kilograms, and pounds. And switching between the different units takes a little bit of a trick that's one of the things that would be a very good idea if they had the instructions on the uh, packaging because it's not very intuitive. So to change the units, what you do is you turn it on and as soon as you turn it on, you start pressing the button again and then you toggle between all the different settings. You'll see them here on the side going from grams to ounces to kilograms to pounds and you can just cycle through them until you get to the one that you want. So I'll show you how it's done. Press the button, immediately start toggling. And you can see on the side 
that the uh, measurement unit is changing. And the one down at the bottom is pounds. You stop there, and now it's measuring in pounds. A problem with this particular scale, and perhaps a reason to buy another scale, is that the unit of measurement cannot be changed once the unit is on, or even after you've weighed your bag. In order to change the measuring unit, you actually have to power it down, turn it back on, and then change the unit. There's no other way to do it. So now it's measuring pounds. If I want to change that to uh, kilograms, I have to turn it off, turn it back on, and now cycle through until I get to kilograms, and then release. The more advanced and more expensive scales, you can actually change the unit while it's on. And the best ones actually have two buttons, one power button, and then beside it, a unit button. And then every time you press that unit button, it will cycle between all the measuring units. You also can't change the measurement units after you have weighed something. For example, I'm currently measuring in pounds, and if I weigh my suitcase and get a measurement, I can't now touch a button to change it to kilograms. If I want to convert that to kilograms, I either have to do it in my head or turn off the unit, turn it back on, cycle down to kilograms, and then weigh my bag again and get a reading in kilograms. So that's the only way to do it. And I think that's a big disadvantage of this scale. If I could have, I would have bought one that uh, you can cycle through the units of measurement at any time, even after you've weighed something or before you've weighed it. Um, but I ended up buying this one for one reason in particular that I'll talk about when I show you how you actually weigh a bag. There's one big advantage. This scale has one other function I should mention before I move on, and that is the tear function, T-A-R-E. This tear function is used to weigh just the contents of, an, of a suitcase. So you could use the tear function to figure out how much just the stuff inside your suitcase weighs, independent of the, the weight of the suitcase itself. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to use it. When you turn the scale on, you can see it says tear briefly over on the left. I will uh, turn it on one more time. If you look quickly, you'll see the word tear show up. And it has that function, but nowhere in the, in the instructions have I found anything about how to use it. But to be honest, it's really kind of pointless because if all you want to do is know how much your stuff weighs, well, you simply weigh your suitcase when it's empty, then you weigh it when it's full, you know, subtract the weight of the suitcase, and there you have the weight of the contents. You know, it does not take a rocket scientist uh, to figure out how to do that. Probably takes more brain power to figure out how to use the uh, tear function in this device, because as I said, I haven't been able to figure out how to use it. It's probably not a function I would ever use anyway. So let's talk about how you actually weigh something with this luggage scale. I mentioned that there are luggage scales out there that have better features than this scale from Go Travel, but I bought this one mainly because of two features. One is that it's extremely small and lightweight, and the other is that it uses only this nylon strap for hanging your bags. All of the other luggage scales that I saw have either a huge metal hook on the bottom or they have a large metal buckle on the end of the strap that is designed to clip into this triangle at the top. So you would run your strap through the handle of your bag, take the metal buckle and then clip it around here at the top and that's how you would attach it or if you happen to have one with a big metal hook, you just put the hook through the handle and lift up your suitcase that way. Um, I have a problem with both of those. The big metal hook ones 
To be honest, I don't know if you'd be allowed to take them onto an airplane. I think they'd be considered a security risk. So if you're just going to use them at home as a luggage scale before you go to the airport, that would be fine. But if you wanted to put it into your bag to take it with you, which I think is a very good idea because you can use it again when you're coming home and you can use it in the airport to weigh your bag one last time and you can weigh your carry-on bag to make sure that it, it also fits into the uh, airline limits. And if you have one with a big metal hook, you know, security probably won't let you take it aboard the plane. And the ones that have the metal buckle, they would probably be allowed by security, but it's a big heavy piece of steel and it, you know, rattles around, it could scratch up the front and it's just, I don't know, it's just an unnecessary piece of steel. I think these scales need this metal eyelet here and it needs this metal triangle just to be able to weigh things accurately but beyond that it doesn't need any metal so this strap works fine and the way it works is you put it through the handle of your suitcase or your knapsack then thread the scale through the loop and tighten it up so that's how you attach this scale to your bag by looping through this strap and it's a little bit more work than you know just having a hook but it's not such a big deal and i like it that it is so simple and it is so lightweight to take it off you slide it through again and then it comes off easy as can be so now let's try it out with a, a full backpack so I have my backpack here. I filled it up with a variety of items just to make it heavy. I have no idea what the weight is and I want to show you the proper technique for using this scale from Go Travel. As I said, this scale is designed to be used with one hand. You hold it in your hand, you know, between your fingers, just like you would hold the handle of a suitcase in the safety instructions for this uh, scale they make a very clear point that is designed to be used at your side so when you attach it to your suitcase or to your um, backpack or whatever it is you're wearing you have it at the side running parallel to your body and then you lift it with your knees so you would attach it bend your knees and then go straight up this way you might be tempted to put the bag in front of you and then hold the scale with both hands and then try to lift the bag that way, but that would put a lot of strain on your back. And in fact, this scale is not designed to be held, you know, on the, on the two extreme edges. It's designed for you to hold it against your whole hand, you know, like that. So the best way to use one of these scales is to leave it off until you're absolutely ready to use it. So right now the scale is off. You take the strap, run it through the handle of your suitcase or your backpack, thread the scale through the strap itself, and then tighten it down. I find it's best you have the button towards the front, you know, where your thumb is, and that means the screen is facing you at the right orientation. If you hold it the other way around, it's upside down and it's harder to uh, read the screen. So you tighten this down nice and tight so that there's no movement there. One thing about these scales is that when you turn it on, you have to be very careful that there's no tension on the strap because that's where the tear function comes in. If when you turn it on and it feels weight, it thinks that is the weight of the container itself and it will zero out including that weight and you'll get an inaccurate result. So what you have to do is make sure that there is no tension on the strap at all and no weight being held. Then turn it on, wait until it reads zero, zero, zero. And once it does that, stand up beside your bag, knees bent, holding the scale like a handle and then just straighten out your knees and try to hold the bag as steadily as you can. Put it down and then you can read it 
0.1 pounds. Wait until it reads 000. Do it again. Again, 28.1 pounds. Just to be safe, I'll do it a third time. Raising it up. And again, the exact same weight, 28.1 pounds. So, quite accurate. As I said uh, earlier, if you want to measure in kilograms, unfortunately, you either have to convert that figure in your head, use the calculator, or turn the unit off, turn it back on, cycle through the units, wait until you get zero, 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 and then repeat the process. That time it measured 12.72 kilograms, but I think you could see that the backpack was kind of swinging around that time. It took longer for the weight to lock in. So you have to be careful to try and hold your bag as steady and still, you know, as possible. Once you're done, just loosen the strap, pull it through, and then you're ready to go. An interesting thing about these scales, particularly for someone like me, is that you don't need to use it just to measure your big backpack or your suitcase. You can measure your carry-on luggage because this goes up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds, but it could also measure something that is two pounds, five pounds, 20 pounds, anything at all. So if you're shopping for a new tent and you want to compare the weights of the different tents, you can go to the store, you know, measure the tents, see how much they weigh. You're curious how much all your camera equipment weighs, you know, are you carrying too much, too little? Um, you can put all your camera lenses together in a bag, lift it up, see how much your camera gear uh, weighs, and you can uh, use that to try and figure out, you know, what you can leave behind to make your bags uh, lighter and that sort of thing. This bag, for example, is my GoPro bag. Right now it's really quite light because I don't have my GoPro inside it or a lot of other accessories. But just as an example, let's see uh, how much that weighs. And I want to uh, weigh it in pounds because that's how I think. So I have it set to pounds. Put it through. Tighten it up, wait to get zero, 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 lift it up, 1.34 pounds. Same thing, 1.34 pounds. I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of how these luggage scales work and you can see whether you would like to pick one up and use it in the future. When it comes to the features you can look for, as I said, if you're going to use them at home, it doesn't really that matter that much which one you get. I think they're all fairly high quality that I've seen. You know, once you're spending 10 or $15 on one of these scales, they all seem to work really well. The difference is that some of them are bigger and heavier. Um, designed to be used with two hands or they have the big metal hooks or the metal buckle and if you're okay with that kind of thing you know you can go for one of the uh, bigger units with all the metal on it if you're going to you put it in your carry-on bag and go traveling with it you probably want to find a smaller and lighter one you know the smallest lightest one you can find some of them have a lot more features this is one of the more basic models Though one thing that is nice about it is that it has the backlit screen that makes it easier to read, though it does draw more battery power. So your battery might die a little bit earlier than if it did not have a backlit screen. I looked at one in a store that did not have a backlit screen and uh, I was quite ready to buy it actually. It seemed like quite a nice scale but then the sales clerk asked me if I wanted to turn it on and actually see how it worked in operation. And I'm glad I did that because when I turned it on, it turned out that the numbers and the letters were so sunk into the edges on the uh, screen, you couldn't really see them. 
I mean, you had to kind of put the unit at an extreme angle to try and see the numbers. And as soon as I started doing that, I thought, well, no, okay, that one's not uh, good for me. And then when I saw one like this, you know, with the uh, backlit screen, nice big numbers, you know, very bright, easy to read. And I thought, okay, that's, that's the way to go. So the fancier ones have multiple buttons, one for power, one for units. I even saw one with a touch screen, which, yeah, I mean, if you have the money to buy an expensive touch screen model, you know, you can go for that. Not really necessary, but there it is. And I saw a bunch of them had been combined with other features. For example, there are a number of them that have a thermometer built in. I don't know why you would ever need that to know the temperature of the room that you're weighing your bag in, but who knows, you know? They have a, a thermometer inside so you can measure temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I saw one with a flashlight built into it. You know, that could be handy. Your scale has another button on it, so it operates also as a flashlight. I saw one that had a tape measure built into it, which is not a bad idea when you think about it because for luggage, it has to be within a certain weight limit, but it also has to be within a certain size. So you can use the measuring tape that's built into it to measure how long, how wide, how deep your uh, knapsack or your suitcase is. So that's kind of a handy feature as well. So you can get all kinds. Oh, one last one. I even saw a luggage scale that was also a power bank. So you could use it to charge up your phone and things like that, you know, starting to get a little bit crazy when you have features like that. I mean, you could just go out and buy a power bank, but I suppose you could think of it as a power bank that also operates as a luggage scale, you know, and if that is appealing to you, you know, you can look for something like that. So there's a whole range of luggage scales out there with all kinds of different features and you just have to find the one that suits you. I found this one for me mainly because, as I said, it's extremely lightweight and has no metal in the strap and that appealed to me. So I went for the one from uh, Go Travel. That's it for this overview and review of this digital scale. And I'll see you in the next video.